Hey folks, welcome to the Almond Landscape YouTube channel. We're going to do something real cool with GeoGrid. This is an experiment I saw a long time ago at some retaining wall seminar and uh, then seen it some other places. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to involve the dozer, some number nine stone, cardboard boxes, and GeoGrid, specifically uh, DriveGrid from Unilock. And we want to thank Unilock for being a supporter here at the Hardscape Academy. We're going to show you how uh, GeoGrid supports and distributes loads. So will can we make it to where this box will hold up the blade of the dozer once the dozer puts this entire down pressure on it so we're gonna mess with that it's gonna be a lot of fun here we go we're gonna give this a second here we're gonna take these boxes we're gonna get our uh drive grid it's a tri-axial drew grid which means it's strength in three directions and uh, we're gonna lay it out put it in this box this is gonna be cool so here we are i'm gonna skid steer and get a scoop of nines here and the reason we're going to use nines this is number nine limestone astm number nine um this stuff is great for bedding we use it to level up all of our uh, retaining wall projects our bedding for pavers uh, most any application uh versus number 57 astm standard 57 which is three quarter clean uh this is going to work better to, to demonstrate because that three-quarter clean has more bearing capacity and thickness than this. This this has bearing loses most of its bearing capacity after about two inches. What we're going to do here is we're going to take this box and put no geogrid in it and then we're going to uh, i'll probably put a piece of wood over just for fairness sake and uh we're going to put the pressure the load the the dozer case 750m we're going to put the pressure of it down on there and the blocks the box will more or less just blow out so shout out phillips meat there they did some butchering for us and our friends custom uh beef operation there was it kc cattle something like that ck cattle i can't remember um so yeah as brit's doing it then we're gonna go cut up some geogrid and throw that in here we are cutting our pieces to fit in our box i need to find a better tool to cut this with if we're doing a big install but this is the triaxial geogrid again you can see that has strength in three directions, right? One, two, three, makes the triangle shape. Good job, you made it out of kindergarten. And uh, you're gonna be amazed what this does strength-wise, it's crazy. I'm gonna put a couple inches in on the bottom. I never had my material that far away, but, so if you can see in here, we got a couple inches of material. We're gonna take this triax and put it in here like this. And then we're gonna set it with more material here. Anytime you're working stuff, that extra few steps I'm taking there is wasted effort. Like I should have that skid steer way closer. So all that stepping around is a waste of time. So we're gonna level this out. We're gonna put another layer of grid in there. By the time we do that next one, I'm gonna have one more scoop right there just so we're not that much we're gonna level it out so it's all nice and uniform and even you can see the box is bowing already under the pressure we got that one there i'm gonna get this one in here because it just fills yeah doesn't matter that's one thing you gotta make sure that stuff sets taut that's a big deal so make sure it's always pressed on the ground so we've got three pieces in there layered and leveled in there all the way through three lifts if you will i'm gonna put a couple more over top of that perfect how about one more i wonder how heavy this box is perfect we're using these tines uh, just to demonstrate a weaker soil maybe because again once these things are over about two inches they lose their bearing capacity so uh, i'm going to take this board just to distribute that load a little bit uh, i'll tell you what i'm going to build that up just a little bit higher so the board doesn't even push on the box at all
Thank you, sis. I'm going to hit that just a little bit higher. Okay. So I'm going to fire up the dozer. We're going to push this down on there. And we'll see if the box with no grid holds at all versus we'll see how it holds on this one. Well, the blade, uh, you know, obviously it won't hold the weight, right? So um, now we'll pull forward and put it over that, and we'll see how that goes. So here we go. I'm going to pull the blade up. Take it. Would you take a piece of wood? About that Addison is that cool or what yeah okay so there's our box without yeah. any geo grid in it right or drive grid yeah thank you sis thank you Addison my lovely assistant and look at that holding up the dozer isn't that amazing why can't you just push down fully and crush it I I don't know that it will but you, I mean that has got some crazy tinsel to it right now but it's the same box, everything, just that geogrid just distributes that weight so well. It's just so amazing. Isn't that cool? Isn't that wild? Let's do a quick autopsy here. Now, me putting that last little bit of weight because that dozer put a, a little bit of a twist on it, it didn't help if we could put straight down load on it it's hard to say how much weight we could put on this uh that's in another experiment for another day but, I but found it. yeah so pull it out of there we'll Whoa. see what yeah so that part it that part sheared yep yeah. which again when the when the thing moves like that that's not real so we know when we lost that kind of almost that like global stability if you will well um, it's real hard down here yeah so we oh. had some shattering of it there Again, extreme, uh, extreme loading, but uh, really, really amazing to see it hold that load initially. So, you know, anytime you got GeoGrid going on in a project, you need to talk with your local engineer uh, or a Unilock, uh, you know, professional that understands these things and talk to them about where and how much GeoGrid any project should have in it. Never just guesstimate or whatever. Never ever do that. You want to talk to a, a, a professional a physical engineer, structure engineer, again, a Unilock uh, rep, whatever but talk to them and figure out how to do it right uh, with the right amount of geogrid so you have no liability or anything. That was a really fun experiment. I really love doing that kind of stuff in here at the Hardscape Lab here, uh, Hardscape Ac the Hardscape Academy. We're gonna be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I wanna show you our grid back here, more grids, types of grid, just so you're, you're versed on the terminology. That is, again, triaxial, right? Here is a biaxial grid because they have strength in two directions, strength that way and strength that way. And then back here we have a, and these all come in different in different gauges and heavy and strengths and all that kind of stuff. Here's a super heavy duty biaxial. That stuff's monster, monster truck status. Here's a lighter duty uh, biaxial. And then our unis, where's our uni at? Uh, where the heck is my uni axial at? Oh, there it is, right there. Look at me in the eye. And then this is uni axial strength. And you can tell because these little keepers here are, you know, they're just little strands, right? And they're keepers. They keep the long strands of the of the uniaxial strength, right? Like unilock. They keep that strength going just one direction. So this stuff you can never just roll out behind the retaining wall lengthwise of the wall and have the right strength. So again, make sure you know how to use this stuff. Biaxial is going to be strength in two ways. Triaxial strength in three ways, which how can you beat that? Uh, and these are going to come in different th uh, strengths and, and heavy uh, weights of 
of grids. So lots more cool stuff like this coming from the Hardscape Academy and Almond Landscape. Uh, again, courtesy and thank you to Unilock for making this happen, uh, allowing us to take the time to put this kind of cool stuff out there. So uh, your next projects, talk to your Unilock rep about uh, getting some triax in your projects and uh, for that extra cheap insurance on your hardscape and uh, landscape installs. Folks from Almond Landscape HQ here and the Hardscape Academy that's slowly coming to shape here in the Company Cam Podcast, Kid, Kid Contractor Company Cam Podcast Studios, the shop uh, property coming along too. By the way, we are gonna do a full tour of this place. Um, again, that whole back area is gonna be Hardscape Academy. We're gonna do all sorts of cool stuff, the Hardscape Lab and uh, all that. So lots of cool stuff coming. Thanks again, folks, for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. kind of one of those things I start wondering well you know what are we pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone at the moment and part of that I wonder is like our push on YouTube here because it takes a lot of time although I'm not really scared of that or it's, I don't feel like it's really pushing me out of my comfort zone but you know building this big facility is a big push for us it's a big financial push it's um it's a tremendous ordeal getting this thing built and finished by even some semblance of a of a timeline oh my gosh uh, we were, and by the way, our October 1st open house was canceled, folks. I know we've been pushing out for a little while, although we haven't talked about it much. Uh, we are just plain not going to be ready for it. Just we're about a month behind where I'd want to be. I think we'll be in pretty good shape come um, come like the end of October, but I don't think we're going to make October 1. So unfortunately, that's just going to be the case. Now, we do have dates scheduled for the Hardscape Academy trainings uh that we're gonna be hosting this winter those are posted you'll see those on instagram and uh maybe at the end of the show here we'll rattle off those dates and stuff